Todd, how are you, my friend? Doing fantastic. Thank you for having me today. You're very welcome. Very welcome. I feel so honored to be interviewing you. Um, I just watched uh, one of your uh, testimonials as well as the beginning of your free pres presentation. And um, you, you've you been a public speaker for a long time. Yes. Because <laughs> you're so sharp how you, you came into the room and you were uh, uh, giving the audience uh, questions on what what is it that they wanted to do? Do they want to ask you questions or do they want you to just give them the information they were there for, which is to how to become financially independent with real estate investing? So I'm very excited to ask you a bunch of questions and have you share with my audience what it is that they can do for those that want, are perhaps looking for a different way of being financially free and perhaps have been thinking about real estate and how do they start uh, so many courses and people claiming to know that they know how to teach out there. And the way I feel that I've connected with you is you, unlike uh, other coaches or mentors on real estate investing that teach the no money down techniques that Carlton Sheets and, and other people have taught, you believe in a fair relationship between a mentor and a student where the mentor is not charging a, a huge amount of money up front. Correct. But the mentor will be making money when the student makes money. Correct, correct, correct. That to me is, is huge. Like your integrity, your, the, the honor that you have, I applaud you, thank you for doing that. So uh, let's get started. Uh, you telling, uh, please tell me, how, how did you get started? But even before getting started in real estate, how did you get started with public speaking? I believe you were what? <laughs> you were a child when you started public speaking? Yes, I was. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I um, uh, basically it's a God given gift. And uh, I've been a, a Christian since I was uh, age nine. And I started uh, speaking and sharing the gospel at, at, at age 12. So Amazing. That's, that's, that's pretty much uh, how it is. So I just been, you know, uh, call on my life to impact people's lives in a positive way. So Amazing. And where were you raised? How, what was childhood like for you? Uh, Columbus, Ohio. I'm from Columbus, Ohio, and uh, still uh, live here in Columbus, Ohio, and uh, had great, great parents. Uh, my dad wasn't perfect, and, uh, you know, I could have used some of his flaws as an excuse uh, not to succeed. Uh, my dad was an alcoholic when I was growing up, and then uh, my mom actually prayed for him for 20 years, and then he... Uh, he gave his life back to God and went sober overnight um, after 20 years. And um, so, uh, but yeah, uh, but you know, my mom was always a, a positive uh, spiritual influence and my dad was too. He just, you know, he just had some other issue that my mom didn't have. <laughs> but um, anyway, I bring that up to say, you know, regardless of the family situation that people find themselves in, you know, uh, they can either respond you know, in a positive way or a negative way, and there's no reason to respond in a negative way. Just make the best of whatever circumstances you're in. That's, that's powerful. And we're gonna touch on many, many subjects here in regards to real estate, but for those of you who stay to the end, I'm gonna ask Todd about his other business, which has to do with dancing and salsa. <laughs> And, 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 and him uh, having the, the biggest uh, salsa, what, what would you call it? The biggest salsa, salsa night, salsa night in, in, uh, in Columbus. Yep. Yeah. So he was the host of that. So stay to the end. We're going to touch on that. So Todd, how did you get started in real estate investing and why did you do it? I was searching for a, uh, some kind of business opportunity while I was in college, uh, sophomore college. And uh and I had no idea that it was going to be real estate investing. And uh, I found a book uh, in the library on real estate investing that was actually, uh, it was put in the wrong place. It was misfiled. And, uh, and uh, because I was, you know, there was a real estate investing section in the library and then there's a business section. 
And this book was clearly a real estate investing book. And uh, there were no other real estate investing books in that section. So uh, I picked up that book and uh, read it and uh, that started it. And, you know, from that point, I fell in love with real estate investing. And uh, as they say, the rest is history. <laughs> yes. And we're going to go like past, past and recent past. In the recent past, uh, you had one of your students share that he, uh, you shared the story that you went to Colombia and it's so great speaking with someone like you that you not only are living a life uh, of uh, having, hosting the salsa night, uh, having your real estate business and coaching, but you're also living in other countries. You experience other, other cultures. And you mentioned that uh, when you flew to Colombia, you, one of your students uh, who uh, became uh, successful because of uh, after spending, I think, I don't know how many thousands of dollars on other courses, he was he became successful because uh, he took your training and because you went to Colombia and left the, your meeting for him, your, your weekly meeting, was it? Monthly, you, monthly meeting. So you had a monthly meeting that you would teach people how to do what you do. And, uh, and then you went to Colombia, left him, to, to deal with the new speaker, the big speaker that was in town, which right. was Alan, Alan Calgo. Uh, right. So what, what I'm, the reason I'm bringing that up is to let the viewers and the, and the, and the listeners know that um, I've seen testimonials of Todd. And right. please, please talk a little bit about how you teach and what people are able to, to get from your, from your uh, coaching. So um, as you mentioned, you know, I'm very uh, passionate about, uh, about what I'm teaching. And it's very important for me to get the students the information that they need without charging them a, a bunch of money up front. Uh, so in my coaching program, they pay me a, an affordable monthly fee. That's very important to me that is affordable for the average person uh, because these other coaching programs that charge people 10, 20, 30, 40 grand up front, and then they just push them off that they, they never actually get coached by the guru. They push them off to somebody that may or may not have ever bought any property. So in my coaching program, the students are dealing with me directly. And, uh, you know, they have pretty much 24 uh, seven access to me. So since I'm a dancer, you know, I may be coming in at two or three in the morning anyway. So I don't mind my students reaching out to me, you know, at, at two or three in the morning. So, uh, but yeah, so I'm just, I'm just very, uh, I'm just very accessible to my students and I want them to succeed. Yes. And I remember back in 2004, I, uh, I was one of those people that actually signed up for uh, one of those high-end expensive coaching packages. And it was uh, at that time with uh, Wealth Intelligence Academy. I believe that was the name. That was 2004. And the coaching package was $20,000. And in the seminar, they taught us how to increase our credit, credit, card limits. <laughs> credit card limits so we could afford, yeah. afford it. And I did it. I, I made the calls, increased the credit line just enough to, to fit in those $20,000. Yeah, that's, that's scandalous. <laughs> yes. And so it was four uh, weekends uh, uh, that included wholesaling, uh, apartments, uh, general weekend on real estate, and then the fourth one was, um, it, it will come to me later. So what I got with the 20K was a mentor for four days. Wow. Besides those four weekends. Wow. Uh, in, in group, group teaching. And I had already gone through two weekends before the mentor came to, to Orlando, where I lived at the time. And the mentor uh great guy very very nice uh start like talking with me okay so what have you learned what have you put in practice have you started marketing uh and i said yes i already put the ad on the paper on thrifty nickel uh and i believe another one and uh he started like asking me questions and i thought i told him hey uh is it okay if we role play you be the seller i'm the buyer and then we, we switch. Okay. And then he was like, yeah, let's do that. So I did it a couple of times. And then I started like understanding how to talk to a seller that might be in foreclosure or want to sell the house because they've got a job transfer. 
And you know what he said to me? He said, this role playing thing is great. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do this with my other students. <laughs> what, what I learned then is uh, that he was a new coach. Right, exactly. He was a new coach. So he, he was not the coach that was on stage. And, uh, and, and uh, I kept in touch with some of those people in the seminar. And unfortunately, most of them did not make it. I uh, fortunately made it. And I think it has to do with so many factors. Uh, right. But those, there's, a, there's like a percentage of the people that go to those seminars and the percentage is like one to five percent that that make it. Like, right. Why, right. why do you think that is? And, and how do you feel about uh, like doing the way you do it, which is different than what most uh, real estate coaches do? Yeah, I think it's a combination of factors. Uh, like I said, that that system uh, where they're charging people, you know, tens of thousands of dollars up front, that system is flawed especially if they're putting you with, you know, coaches, you know, first of all, again, you're not going to talk to the actual guru. You're going to talk to somebody like that guy you were talking to. He may never have even never bought any properties or bought very few properties. So, uh, so that's a problem, but also no matter what program, um, as you know, also Fernando, uh, people are, uh, most people are not going to do what it takes in order to be successful. They're going to allow excuses to get in the way. And they're, you know, and that at the end of the day, you know, that's what's happening. They're allowing uh, excuses to, to get in the way. But, um, you know, uh, so yeah, there's there's fault on both sides. There's fault on a flawed system that charges people and doesn't really care about their success. And then there's uh, fault with people that don't want to, uh, you know, do what it takes. Indeed. And let's touch a little bit on the on the techniques. Okay. The techniques. Uh, uh, and, and I touched on, on a couple of those, like wholesaling lease options. Maybe people listening have no idea what they mean. And right. I, if I'm investing in real estate, I need money. I need a, I need to have a good credit. Can you, can you speak to, to, to the... Uh, yeah, so I'm a firm believer of starting businesses that don't require money. I'm a firm believer of that. I'm a firm believer in the American dream. This is the land of opportunity. And, you know, in this country, you don't need money in order to be successful. What you need is knowledge. And uh, so, and that's what I focus on when I started. I was broke. I was a broke uh, sophomore in college, 19 years old, when I bought my first investment property. And I, of the millions of dollars worth of property that I have purchased, I've never used my own money uh, to buy an investment property. I've never gotten a bank loan to buy an investment property. So uh, that's the thing I want to stress you know, the things that people have been told that they have to have a lot of money, they have to have good credit, that's totally irrelevant. I don't use my credit uh, when I buy property. So uh, as far as the techniques, uh, you know, obviously somebody's gonna say, well, how do you do that, Todd? How do you buy property without money and without credit? So the techniques I focus on uh, primarily are uh, wholesaling, which is basically buying a property at a low price or actually getting a property under contract at a low price and then selling it uh, to someone else at a, at a slightly higher price, you make a you make a you can make a very fast profit, and the person that you sell it to is going to be a, a, either a landlord who's going to rent the property out or a uh, or a rehabber who's going to fix it and flip it. All right. Then there's lease options where I take control of the property uh, under a lease with the option to buy, and then I sell it with the lease under the option to buy. So I'm going to lease it and you know at one price, and then sell it to somebody else at a higher price. And then there's taking over payments, uh, also known as subject to, or getting D, and uh, and then seller financing, where basically the seller and I will, you know, sit down and, and figure out instead of me going to the bank and making payments to, uh, you know, uh, a bank, I'm going to make payments directly to the seller, and typically I can pay them a higher price than what I would pay them if I was paying them cash. Uh, the times I have used uh, cash uh, to to actually buy a property, if I'm going to fix it and flip it, uh, you know, that may take, uh, so there's going to be cash tied up for some time and I'll use uh, private individuals uh, to, uh, that I've cultivated. Uh, that's a whole nother subject because there's a lot of people now that are calling themselves private lenders, uh, but they're really in the business of loaning money. So that's not the kind of people I'm talking about. Um, 
there's uh, people that are the gurus that are selling lists of private lenders. Well, by the time they get on that list, they're already in the business of loaning money. So those rates are going to be much higher than, um, you know, than what a, 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 an investor uh, should be paying the cash flow. So, uh, so yep. So those are those are the 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 main methods that that I employ. Todd, it, it's so interesting that you mentioned wholesaling. That's one. Lease options two, two. Subject to three. Seller financing four. You said fix and flip on five on the, as the fifth position, and right. that's when people think about real estate investing. I would guess that most people would say fix and flip. And you, in your description, put that in as fifth, uh, fifth place. And um, it's, I, I started with wholesaling and I, I skipped lease, lease options and went straight to subject twos. So I did about five okay. and quickly realized, well, I could do a lot more deals with subject to subject twos. And then I would use lease options to exit. Okay, yep. I would use the, the lease option to exit. So I would rent the property to a tenant buyer and, uh, and I took over the payments. I've never done seller financing and never done lease options on both sides. Okay. It's interesting uh, that you, you do that. I could learn from you there. And uh, yeah, so talk about uh, the fix and flip. Like, for instance, I did uh, actually I did one fix and flip, and I, I <laughs> it was uh, I broke even, and I was like never again. <laughs> so talk about a, a little bit fix and flip. Flip. Why do people usually default to that, and why they should not default to that if they're they're new in real estate? So people default to fix and flip is that's because that's mainly what was being taught for for many years was fix and flip. That's all people knew. So. Uh, and then the big thing now is wholesaling. Um, sometimes I think there's more wholesalers out there than there are people, but uh, <laughs> you know, every, everybody, uh, you know, so that, that's the big hype. So wholesaling, uh, I think it's easy. It's an easy, it's an easy concept to explain. So it's easy for gurus to sell courses. Uh, but you know, most people, they either know, they only know fix and flip or they only know wholesaling or they only know those two strategies and they don't know anything about the, the more creative types of deals. So consequently, they're actually losing a lot of money because these other deals that come across their desk that would fit more into a lease option or a subject to or a seller financing category, and they don't know what to do with them. So they're, uh, you know, so it's <laughs> one of the funniest questions to me always is, so what do you do? Uh, do you do wholesaling? And it's like, I do a lot of things, man. <laughs> Do you flip properties? I do. I do a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. How do you explain, uh, for instance, uh, taking over payments when um, I, I, uh, I looked on your uh, website? I, I think I saw something about trust. Do you do, do things in trust, land trust? Land trust, correct. So, yeah. So, how do you explain, like, <laughs> you know, land trusts to, to someone and, and, and even, uh, yeah. There's so much that goes into uh, taking over a uh, property that uh, that the mortgage stays in place and how to do it in a way that it's it's uh, it's sustainable, meaning you're going to keep your word with the seller. Uh, you're going to make money and uh, you're going to uh, provide a home for a buyer or a tenant. Right. And um, I remember... Uh, Back in 2006, I started coaching and mentoring what I was learning. And uh, I had a teacher that said, if you want to get really good at something, go out and teach it. <laughs> I was learning. I was learning on, from one, you know, one person here, one, one group, and then teaching. <laughs> yeah, I would do it, and then I'll teach it. Uh, and it did help me, you know, acquire you know, maybe 25 properties was my best one of my best years on rentals with 20 rentals actually uh for a good run of four years with 20 rentals those are, those are great years and um uh, but back to the coaching and mentoring out of 11 people that signed up for my program and it was a one-year program only one person made money 
only one person made money and it was the person that had the least education or was the hungriest right and happened to be also the youngest yeah and, and it doesn't and nothing against people with education or people with uh, that are older but i guess also the desperation i believe that i'll say desperate he was yeah. the most he had to borrow money from his parents to pay me to hire me. Yeah. And then we, we split the profit. So it's interesting. One, one thing that I really connected with you on is you are, it's very rare for me to meet a real estate mentor who splits, splits profits. Uh, sure. And works mostly on that. I'm more interested in, 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 in helping someone become successful and then we split the profits rather than just charging a fee and whatever you make money or not, it's, it's your problem. And you, right. you, I really, really respect you. I really appreciate that. <laughs> yes, and, and um, I think a, a lot of people or a few people that might be listening, this might uh, uh, ring true for you, might feel like a good fit because it's rare to find in this day and age, uh, it's rare to find someone who is going to have the integrity to say okay i want to make money but let's make money as you grow and exactly i always say the my greatest desire for each of my students since we split the profits on deals 50 50 in the coaching program my greatest desire is that they make a million dollars right because the only way they that i can make a million is if they make a million so that's that's that that's the way um I want to I want to share something with your audience uh, that I see every day and I know you see it too. I think we talked about this the other day is that people need to get some free information but do not expect that YouTube University is going to <laughs> magically transform your bank account. YouTube University is a good place to start with free information. That's the same way I started in the library like I said. Start with free information but use but use that to determine which courses you want to buy. Then you, after you get some courses, then if you feel like you need more help, then use the courses to help you determine which mentor that you want to hire. Because every successful person goes through, well, I can't say every, but most successful people go through those coaches. And Fernando, you know, as well as I do, the highest paid people in the world, they have mentors, they have coaches and they're shelling out big money but it's okay to shell out big money for a coach when you can afford to shell out big money for a coach. So I see hundreds of people every day trying to shortcut their education. You need to be willing to invest in yourself, just like that student that you had. Like you said, out of your 10 students or 11 students, the one that was the most successful was the guy that borrowed money from his parents. Now, I'm not advocating people to go out and borrow money to get courses, all right? Because there's nowadays, especially there's so much free information. As you know, I offer a lot of free information for people that aren't that, that can't afford to invest. But whatever you got to do, once you get to that point, if you are hungry and you want success, you got to invest in yourself. Go get, go drive for Uber Eats, go drive for DoorDash, Instacart, whatever. You know, do whatever you have to do to make some extra money to get the education you want. We will go to college and spend tens of thousands of dollars for a college education, and uh, you know people just like I do, they're working at, at, at a place that doesn't require a degree. <laughs> yeah. They're not working in their field. Anyway, I'm very passionate about that. <laughs> yeah, and thank you. Thank you for doing that, for being passionate, because we need more people like you to teach the people that I would say they are looking for something that feels right for them. And they, are, they have the right intentions. I liked one thing that you asked in your presentation is this information about to share is very powerful. Do you promise to use it for good? Yeah. Yeah. You promise to use it for good. That is, is, is huge. Uh, one of the mentors I had, he had a saying, uh, go, as soon as you get a call from a seller, be the first to, to go on, on that appointment. Get to the house as soon as possible. And then he said something that uh, I didn't know it was going to have an impact of, on, on my life later on. Uh, he said, you cannot, when you see a good deal, uh, you can't, something to the effect of, 
you have to like the the connotation of you have to steal a deal quickly you right? can't steal in slow motion you can't steal in slow motion or something right. like yes <laughs> and 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 it was just recently after not not doing real estate deals for for years and just keeping the rentals that i realized that i had that negative connotation in my mind that i that i realized well i have to release that which means that if i do something quick quickly it means that it's it might be uh unbalanced or i'm stealing something oh okay you know, so it's something uh yeah it, and it was back in 2005 six and seven when i took those courses where people were so excited about real estate they could buy a house one month and sell the next month for for more and make money Right. And the, the the name of the one of the the, the the themes was do it fast, do it fast, do it fast right. until two thousand happened. Two thousand seven, <laughs> right? <laughs> until two thousand seven happened, and then it's like, okay, what do you do now? Um, I thought I was gonna lose, I don't know, twenty plus houses at the time because you know they were all on lease options, and I could not honor that higher price that I thought they the. the uh, the values, uh, the appreciation was had done in the past six, uh, six, 12 months. Well, no more appreciation. So that new number, the borrower is not going to be able to apply for a loan and get a loan. The house is not going to appraise. Right. So went through all of that. Um, and um, yeah, so something to do about uh, use this for good, especially the, the subject twos, especially right. The subject twos, the land trusts, the taking over payments, because uh, people, uh, you, for those that want to learn more about this, you'll be talking with people whose lives, they're going through some financial difficulties, some problems in their lives, emotional, right. uh, tough times. And it's, it takes someone with integrity, empathy, and, and um, to help them. And I... I felt like a therapist many times when yeah. I was on the, on the appointments and, uh, and I'll land an ear and ask questions and really be interested. And, and then I realized, you know what? I need to stop doing that so much because I was taking people's energies. Right. right. I know that I can be a, have empathy without taking their energy. Right. Right. So, so much to, to learn. And, and, and for those that care a lot, if you care a lot about people, you do well in real estate and buying houses. It, it, I'm telling you, people can feel it. Right, if they can. You people, you love people, you do very well. The numbers, the contracts, all of that, you learn as you go. Right. And for, for now, on the other, on, on the different spectrum, Todd, for people that are listening uh, or watching and they have money, they have money, they can start, they have money set aside. What would you uh, su suggest them do? Would you suggest them start the same way, wholesaling lease options, uh, seller financing, or would you suggest them uh, actually uh, suggest them to use their capital? No, I uh, no. If they have capital, we, we, having capital was irrelevant. <laughs> if they actually, if they have capital, that can be. If they have capital and they have good credit, that can actually be a uh, a problem because it makes them uh, mentally lazy. The easiest thing to do if you have money is just to go out and spend it and buy something, right? Uh, that's what people do on Amazon. That's what con that's a consumer mindset. But the reality is that rich people don't use their own money, right? Only poor people and middle class people have bought into this trap of using their own money. And then what, if they can't afford it, then they go and get credit. So uh, for example, when I first got started, before I knew anything about private lenders, I got started. So I was a college kid and they, you know, college kids, they send them uh, in the mail, they send them credit card offers because they have their credit as a clean slate. And uh, and they're a good they're a good bet, you know. So a, a lot of the credit card companies think, obviously. So I just started collecting credit cards, and I started by my first few houses. I bought them with credit card cash advances. Mm. So, uh, but I wasn't using my own money. I was using Visa's money and Mastercard's money to buy these houses. Uh, so you know, from the beginning, I learned how to buy properties without using my own money. 
and I could afford to pay the crazy exorbitant interest rates because I was, you know, I was making a lot more money on my return of investment that I could pay the, the crazy credit card interest. Mm. So, yeah, so, so, but, but having money, uh, you know, people f- use that as a fallback and then they don't get educated on how to make money without money. So let's say you got, you've got $200,000. How much property can you buy? You can only buy $200,000 worth of property, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? And if you're using your own credit, then sooner or later, the bank is gonna cut you off because they're gonna say, Fernando, you've got too many mortgages on your credit report. We don't care how much money you make. We don't care how much money these properties are bringing in. Our banking metrics tell us that we cannot loan you any more money because you are now a credit risk. Well, maybe I don't wanna buy four, only four properties. Maybe I wanna buy a hundred. Maybe I wanna buy 500, right? So I'm not gonna put my financial future in the hands of a, a bank, you know, some, some banking authority. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And I've, I've had people in the past approach me saying, hey, I have this money, uh, can, what do you suggest I do with it? And it was in the years that I was not active in real estate in the past uh, eight years or so. And I said, okay, well, when I get back to it, I'll, I'll, I'll gladly put it to use in some venture, apartment buildings or, or, or something that will cash flow nicely. And, um, and I felt like, wow, uh, there is the, 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 one of the a different mentor I had taught me that if you do a business, one way to never lose money is to never use money. Exactly. <laughs> One way to never lose money is to never yes. use money. So you can use this or you can use this of someone else. Right. You can use someone else's knowledge right. to make money and assemble the deals. And, and that's what wholesaling is. So wholesaling is, is creating value with that contract. So you have a contract to buy a property and the contract is such a good value, meaning it's, it's, it's lower than what's what it's appraised for that someone else can buy that house for that price and give you extra for the assignment fee. Right. Um, Now, if I can backtrack a second, uh, I just remember why I brought up the credit card thing specifically is because I didn't use from the beginning, I didn't use credit cards to buy things, consumer items that I couldn't afford. I only use credit cards to buy investment property. I never use it. So if I couldn't pay the credit card off at the end of the month, I wouldn't buy something that was going to make me carry a credit card consumer balance. Right. So I didn't use a credit card to buy anything. I couldn't pay off my, 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 I had my, my personal credit card and my business credit cards. So my business credit cards, I used them to buy as much property as I wanted, but my, my I always kept a small uh, balance on my uh, personal card and paid it off at the end of the month. Very good distinct, distinction there. Uh, only using debt to create profit. Exactly, exactly. We use debt to create profit. Exactly. So, uh, and, um, and, and as the, one of the reasons I reached out to you is I saw your comment on a Facebook group, and I believe it was a wholesale group where you, you, your answer <laughs> was, was so detailed. You had bullet points. You had it, like these amazing emojis and this, and I'm like, wow, who is this person that took so like so much time and energy to answer this question? And and then when I reached out to you, we started speaking. I'm thinking, wow, I I just met an amazing mentor here, and I I want to share share this with the world. And I believe your values are you know money I, i'm sure is not top of your values like right obviously <laughs> not top of your values like money is is probably number five there and and, and, and uh, but it's something like people like you that i believe need to uh be more out there uh teaching others and as i come back to the world of real estate and i'm you know what i'm gonna blame this on the recession that hasn't happened yet because i've yeah. been for the recession for like three years and i'm thinking okay when the recession ha- hits again i'll get back into it right, and, right. and then 
2017 doesn't happen. 18 doesn't happen. 19, the market just kept keeps getting hotter and hotter. More money printing, money printing. The values go up, inflation go up. I'm thinking, come on, I don't want to get back <laughs> to real estate uh, uh, before the, the the recession happens. And and but it seems like you know what? I'm just gonna give up that idea. So I'm getting back into real estate. Uh, for those of you that want to reach out to me, I reached out to Todd because I, I, I'm, I want to assemble a team of amazing people that are heart-centered, have integrity, and can help uh, people not only make money, but also help uh, sellers uh, find a new, uh, a new, I guess, lessen their pain because there will be, and correct me if, uh, if you have a different, uh, or, or give me your opinion, please. I believe that will be when money sprint, printing stops, 2007, for those who, who, who remember 2008, it might happen again, it might. And if it does, like we need people to help those in transition when the foreclosures, exactly. sales start again, the evictions. So we need people like you to be teaching many others on how they can have, live a better life, spend more time with their family and their kids uh, because they have rental properties, because they're making five, ten, twenty thousand dollars on a deal, even if they're splitting with people like you and me. Right, exactly. It's like we, we make it go around. It's like the prosperity mindset. We help each other by helping others. Um, so, what, do you, what is your opinion of? the recession will there be another one will it be different will it be like 2007 what would you say so uh first of all you know i don't really worry about that i don't really concern myself with that uh because uh with the techniques that i'm using i can make money in any market all right now having said that uh obviously i have some uh some views on what's going to happen with the pandemic um immediately so um Number one, it's good that the, the government's keeping interest rates low because if the government wasn't keeping interest rates low for the last you know 10 years, there would be a recession. There would, there would be a, a greater recession. Now, also, you know, we need to be cognizant that there may not be a recession for you and me, but for a lot of people, there's a recession right now. You know, they're having their own personal recession because people can't work. And uh, you know, if you know, if you've been uh, whoever's listening to this or watching this, if you've been impacted. Uh, well, whether you've been impacted or not, you know, if you want a better life, you, you owe yourself and your family to get educated on some of the things that we're talking about so that you can live the life that, that you want to live. And, and, then, and then you don't have to, you know, be concerned if there, there's a market going up, there's a market going down. Is there a recession or not? Okay. Because you can basically become recession proof yourself. Um, but um, as far as what's going to happen in the real estate market, obviously, the uh, there's a lot of uh, foreclosures that are being artificially held up right now. And even before the pandemic, the foreclosures were being artificially held up because back in the day, if somebody went three payments behind in their mortgage, the bank was filing a notice of default and starting foreclosure. But, you know, I've experienced uh, many years where uh, recently where people would call and I'd say, hey, how far are you behind on your payment? I'm behind one year, two years. Back in the day, before 2007, that was unheard of. That was unheard of. So now we have this situation where with the pandemic, there's gonna even be more people that are behind and uh, there's gonna be people that can't pay rent, people that are gonna start getting evicted that the government's being you know, held, held in check. So, uh, and, and as you alluded to earlier, you know, we wanna be in a position, the reason why you wanna uh, learn about real estate investing and creating financial freedom is because financial freedom comes uh, in real estate investing comes through helping people who are in a position where they need to get rid of a house. They need to, or they want to. They don't necessarily have to need to, they don't have to be desperate, but they want to. They wanna get rid of this house for whatever reason, because something in their life has become more important and more urgent than getting top dollar. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. Well, who's gonna sell their house to me at a discounted rate? Well, first of all, if you learn, you know, several of the techniques I teach, you don't have to buy it at a discounted rate. You can pay full price as long as the terms 
and the payments are something that are going to be advantageous to the seller and allow you to make money. Same way with somebody selling their property at a discount. If somebody just got a job transfer to another state and their spouse is already, uh, maybe their spouse is already relocated or they've got this house to sell, they want to bring their family together. That's a lot more important than, you know, squeaking out every last dollar out of their house. Or maybe they're sick or maybe they have a sick family member. These are things that are far more important than getting top dollar on their property. So you have to be, you know, don't think, why would somebody want to do that? Think about the people out there that I might be able to help by, by putting myself in a position to learn these new skills so that I can help them. Yes, indeed. Helping people and, and being helped ourselves. Exactly. And um, one thing that came as you were talking is the... <laughs> The techniques I learned in real estate uh, listening, I guess, number one, and s negotiating somewhat. In my negotiations, that was, I never really negotiated much. It, it was never negotiated much. I used the formula, I used the percentage, and uh, it was every appointment I, I went to, I left with a contract. Awesome. And that's, and, and I probably need to let go of that story because that story might be like keeping me from like getting back into it thinking, well, my record is so good. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> my, my record is not that good. <laughs> my record is not that good. What I tell people is uh, I'm going to ask the seller, I'm going to talk to the seller enough over the phone uh, so that I know with if I leave my desk, there's an 80% chance of me buying that property. So they have to they have to answer my questions uh, the way that I want them to, because I'm like a doctor. I'm making a diagnosis. Hey, how can I help this person? What can I prescribe this this person? And if I can't help them, then I'll just tell them. You know, um, I'll just tell them I'm not their best option. Yes, and and something that I, I um, that I learned that that's a side effect, a positive side effect of of doing real estate and dealing with with sellers is that I could apply similar techniques to all other areas in life. Exactly. Of, uh, with whether it's uh, talking with anyone, but say like I started traveling. So I would go to places, I would rent a, a place for a month or two or three because I like the city. I wanna be, live like a local. Um, I would apply certain techniques and, and get deals that were fair uh, uh, and that I liked more than the initial deal. So what I'm saying here is that when what I learned through dealing with not only dealing with sellers, but the creative, the creativity that my mentors taught me, how to think creatively, how one of them taught, give me five ways you can, you can make this deal work. Five ways that you can buy this house. I like that. Yeah. Right. And 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 that problem solving is not even problem solving, it's more creative thinking. Creative thinking, yeah. It, it, you can take this anywhere else in your life, not just in real estate, this creative thinking. It becomes right. like a way of being that maybe we should add to our list of benefits. <laughs> yeah, <right>. <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's a it's a it's a I became someone different. Like where I, I added that to, to life. How can I apply this? And I started giving friends of mine that own businesses advice on businesses that had nothing to do with real estate because I was so trained and thinking outside of the box. And one of my mentors uh, says, what box? <laughs> there is no box. <laughs> That's how, how expendable creativity can be. And... Um, I'm realizing we're, we're, this conversation is amazing. I will keep you talking for hours. Please tell us about your salsa, uh, your salsa night. Yeah, so I'm a, a salsa dancer and, um, and uh, I have, uh, I run salsa dancing um, in, in my city in Columbus, Ohio. And I have the longest running uh, salsa night in Columbus uh, every Saturday night, obviously. This is pre-COVID, pre-quarantine. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're in the quarantine right now, so we can't dance. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, other than that, um, you know, I love it. 
It's uh, that's how I get my cardio in. So uh, I, I I may rumor has it I may have gained a few pounds since I haven't been able to dance lately. <laughs> but yeah, um, so yeah, so I'm definitely big into uh, into dancing and kind of as you were alluding to, you know, I, I see a lot of similarities because I, I teach dancing. I've taught thousands of people uh, how to dance and uh, and I've taught thousands of people how to invest in real estate. And uh, I see, you know, the teaching process is the same regardless of whether it's real estate or dancing. And uh, so I see, I see people trying to take shortcuts in their dancing education, and I see people trying to take shortcuts in their in their real estate education. They want to be overnight, you know, experts, but you're not going to be overnight expert. Everybody has to go through the process. You got to put your time in, and then you know, eventually, uh, you'll be a success. Thank you, thank you, Todd. You are amazing, and. Uh... We, we, we got to do this again because there's yep. so much. Uh, how can people get uh, in touch with you that want to uh, hire you and learn more about you? So uh, the, uh, the, I do, like I said, I do offer a free training so people can uh, take advantage of my, I got a 90 minute free training class that I offer uh, right now. Um, not charging for it right now, may charge for it later or soon. And that's at realestatecashflowsecrets.com realestatecashflowsecrets.com that takes you uh, directly to the uh, to the seminar, you know, the online seminar. They can watch it 24 seven. And also if they wanna uh, visit my website and, uh, and uh, get in contact with me and check out my, my courses and my coaching and my consulting, I do offer also hourly consulting. If people aren't ready to make a commitment for a, a monthly coaching program, they can take advantage of my uh, hourly consulting program. And all of that information is at imentorrealestate.com. imentorrealestate.com. Amazing. Thank you, Todd. It's been an honor and pleasure to speak with you again. Likewise. And uh, for those of you who are interested, please reach out to Todd and those interested in reaching out to me. Uh, I plan on working with Todd and creating an amazing uh, program to help people uh, like yourselves uh, get to a level where you have money coming in from rentals and you, if you want to quit your job you can or if you love your job you just want extra income you can as well awesome contact me contact todd and um, thank you todd again for your time thank you and everyone else have a great day a great evening a great morning much love much light and go out and have some fun today all right thanks again